Now, your earnings are one of the special units in Lord of the Rings Rise to War, and today, we're going to take a Bayorning camp so that we can recruit them. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today, we're taking down a Bayorning camp so that we can recruit this special unit. Now, this video is going to have some timestamps, and we're going to walk you through uh, what are the Bayornings, what are they... Uh, special for what are they good for in this game then we're going to take the camp then we're going to try to recruit them and if you're into lord of the rings rise to war consider subscribing especially if you've been getting value from my videos and throw a like on the video let's go baby the bjornings are a beast unit available to the uh, light side the good side because <laughs> there's not star wars light side dark side um but you have to be one of the factions that you can see in the upper left over here, there are neutral units on the map that you can recruit, and you recruit them with gold. This is one of those units, okay? Now, the Bjorning camp is how you recruit them. You take the camp, and then you can recruit the special unit. But why would you care about this special unit anyways? There's a couple things going on here. First of all, it's considered a large unit, which as far as I can tell, is only a downside I've only seen units that do extra damage to large units, and I've not seen any commanders that make it so that large units are more effective, but maybe there's stuff out there that I haven't seen yet where large units is actually an advantage, not from what I can tell. The other thing that you need to know about this unit is that it qualifies as a beast. Now, there are certain commanders that give benefits to beasts, and I'll show you a few of those in just a bit. If we just look at the ability that is upgradable on this unit type, from round four and on, it'll shapeshift into bear form, cure one random debuff, and boost its damage. So this is a unit that is good in longer fights because it goes, well, uh, and clears a debuff and gets much stronger. Now, how do you know if a fight is going to be longer? I'm not entirely sure, to be perfectly honest. It says that these are hard to conscript, which I think just means that they take a really long time. In fact, one command is four units of Bjornings. It's four Bjornings. And that takes 30 minutes to get one command. So I assume that it is the cost, which, gosh darn, it takes resources and gold to get these things. Holy moly. They have a lot of hit points. They have a solid amount of defense, do a ton of damage because four of them makes up a single command. So yes, each one of them needs to do a lot of damage for that to be worthwhile. They have a lot of siege damage, but honestly... I don't know exactly how this would compare to other units because you got to keep in mind that there's four of these. So one unit of these is doing 2,400 siege damage, right? Because that one command unit is four of the Bjornings. So their speed is 62 for what that's worth. If we just compare to some of the units that I'm already using, maybe that's a helpful comparison here. How does 62 stack up? Let's just get a look here at... The units that I've got, I can show you I've got Master Throwers, which are 55. So the speed would determine when in the combat order of a turn they would go. So the Bjornings would go before the Master Throwers. They would go before the Guardians, which are 52 speed. They would go after my Ram Riders, which are 102 speed, which makes sense. And by the way, as I said about large units, as far as I can tell... I've not seen any commander who boosts large units. I've only seen commanders that counter large units. And maybe I should talk just for a moment about commanders. The one commander that I already have that boosts beasts specifically, which a Bjorning is, is Haldir. This is one of the lowest tier of good heroes. I, I mean, I guess technically good and bad is... Good and evil is the, is the way to look at this. But if I go to their portrait and I look at the points they can apply, they've got an ability where beasts recover hit points every round. Woo! I mean, that's kind of cool, right? And the ultimate beast supporting commander, if I go to the tavern, I go to recruit commanders, and most people don't have this because you've got to go all the way to the highest tier, and you've got to check out Radagast the Brown. Oh, man, he has got some stuff for beasts. We just get a look at his abilities here. Let's find where those are. I think it's his whole, like, final set of abilities is eagles. Let's get a look here. Yep. Eagles, speed boost. Like, crazy speed boost. And you get stun immunity. Up top, beasts recover hit points every round. I will point out that this is exactly the same 
as Haldir, the commander I was showing you earlier, and army march speed. Okay, so he's got a few beast abilities here, but that's speed. I mean, eagles be flying. Let me tell you, you are really going fast. And speed not only makes you have the right or a better turn order in a single round of combat, but it also makes it so you go really fast to wherever you're going. So a pro tip sort of uh, tangentially related to what we're talking about here is that I actually have a flight of eagles, one small grouping of eagles that I'm using. And I've got the eagles that are in my barracks in one march, and that's the only thing that's in there. So when I go somewhere, like normally, I don't know, this would be like, let's say a five minute walk or whatever. If I go gather here, like, dude, these eagles freaking go so fast. 55 seconds with the eagles, four minutes and 24 seconds with some humans. So yeah, anyways, okay, speed, Beasts, Eagles, Bjornings is what we're doing right now. We're going to attack this thing. We're going to get the Bjornings. This has two armies. They're level 35. I can solo that with one army now. I'm going to send Dwalin. Technically, it looks like I'm a little lower on troops than I realized for some reason. I'm just going to take this thing. And it has 200,000 um, siege damage that you need to deal before you can take it. So I'm going to send Aragorn, who I brought here for that purpose. So I can do a bunch of damage, and then once we take this thing, let's go try and conscript some of these and just get a look at what that process is like. They're very expensive. I mean, they are extremely, extremely expensive to be spending gold on a unit that dies. I mean, you have to really know what you're doing to be using any of these units where you're spending gold because that is a very premium currency that there's only so many, so many ways to boost. I mean... You can do things that increase your levy amount by constructing certain buildings. That will give you more gold, and I strongly recommend that you do that. But other than that, man, I mean, there's not a lot of ways to boost your gold production. You can spend some gems to get more gold out of the deal. Oh, leveled up. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to take this thing, man. How much durability does it have? Oh, my God. It's just over a... 100,000 durability. So I think my fresh march is going to hit. This is going to do some damage and then come home to the fort that I built pretty much just for the purpose. Okay, we got it. Let's go, baby. 310 ring power per hour is solid. It's not amazing, right? For for taking up one tile, if I took an effigy, card up in the top if you want to see a video where I took some effigies, uh, that gives you 500 ring power per hour. So if that's all you wanted, this is not the tile for you. The reason you take this is so that you can recruit some Bjornings. So can we recruit some Bjornings? Let's first just get a glance at the report. What was in this thing? Oh, Radagast was there. And of course, Radagast was leading Bjornings. And bad news for the Bjornings, my friends. Remember how I said certain units are good against large units? Well, Man, I got a lot of freaking master throwers that are really good against Bjornings. And not only that, but they also do extra damage to melee units. Well, what does a Bjorning qualify as? It's a melee unit. How do you know? Says so right over here. So, yeah, the Bjornings are not a counter to dwarven axe throwers. Let me tell you that. Yikes. Up top, the two fights, I mean, were just very straightforward for me to win here. Okay, cool. Um, and I mean, okay, so just to just to get a little bit of a closer look at that report so that people who are attacking one of these camps know what they're up against. It is a max ability here for the shape shifting, so it's good to know. If you had a commander that does a lot of damage up front, for example, Dwalin, you can specialize with your talents to do a whirlwind attack on turn three. He also can be specialized to have a um all-in attack where you do a lot of damage. I think it's like turn four, maybe, or maybe it's turn three as well, and the whirlwind is turn two, and you do a ton of damage on that turn, but less in later turns. A commander that does a lot of damage up front is how you want to take this down, or just be overleveled like I am, and then it's kind of pretty straightforward, right? So uh, let's get a look at the recruiting process now. I'm going to make my way back to my city. We're going to go in and hit the barracks, the ordings. Here they are. Very hard to conscript if I hit higher. I now have the slider so that I can do this, which is pretty cool. Now, to jeez, man. Now, the, the advantage of this is that it's an extra queue, okay? I have an extra way to recruit units to come and fight for me. 
That's the upside. The downside is that on top of the resources it takes to get this unit, it is a lot of gold. It is a huge amount of gold. Now, granted, I am queuing up a fairly ridiculous, fairly ridiculous amount of Bjornings, like a whole army worth of Bjornings right now. Um, and I, I don't know that I necessarily want to do that at this exact moment. In fact, right now, I feel like a stronger use of my gold is almost certainly going to be buffing up the stats on units that I already have. As an example, I've got these Iron Warriors that I just unlocked. They're tier four, baby. And I have permanent upgrades that I still need to make to these. This, to me, feels like a better use of my gold in the short term. I don't really have that, like, super urgent need to get a roster of Bjornings going, although I plan to. Not right now. I just don't think it's the right thing to do. But I want to know your comments down below about Bjornings. What are they good for? How should I be using them? Because it looks like they're solid. Right? They got a lot of defense. 75 defense, 1,000 hit points. Now, they have 1,000 hit points because there's only four of them per unit, right? So these have 40 hit points and, ooh, 101 defense. I mean, that ain't so bad. 101 defense versus 75 defense? I don't know. There's probably some math to be done here around the damage per second of a command, around the, I guess, combination of health and defense. And I sort of wonder, like, how do these interactions work with health and defense? I don't know. We know health modifies the amount of damage a unit can receive before dying, which is fairly logical. This decreases defense, decreases the amount of physical damage that you take. Note that it does not include focus damage. So focus damage actually seems to possibly circumvent armor, which is kind of badass, and I didn't know that. Uh, but again, leave that comment down below with your ideas for a ultimate Bjorning army. What would you do? Which commander would you use? What gear would you use? I want to know all of that in the comments. And in the meantime, I mean, I've now got the Bjorning camp. I'm going to run my way back to one of the forts along the chain that I made to get here. I should have done this in a different order, but whatever. Um, I'm going to run back to one of these forts that I made. I'm going to take one of those effigies that I was talking about earlier. 500 ring power per hour. Hello, baby. So I'm going to march my way over there, take one of those, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I've now made my way to a small number of effigies, four total. I've got the two 230 lands, but they, I just lose too many troops. It's not worth taking those for me right now. And 46 level 200 lands. In terms of our progression with ranking, we're doing pretty well. Personal production's up to 11. And uh, yeah, ring levels down to 15 rank relative to everybody else. But if you're looking for more videos about taking tiles and sending multiple units to take harder tiles, I'll have a card up in the top. Earlier today, I made a video about taking down a 230 plus tile. If you're interested in that, check it out. Throw a like on the video if you had fun. And until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies and subscribe for more videos.